Rooftop tents like this Smitty Belt Gen 2 Overlander tent behind me have become extremely popular. But what are the honest ups and downs of owning and using a rooftop tent? So I've had this tent behind me on my Jeep since last year and I've taken a number of trips with it and today I'm going to give you the brutally honest ups and also the brutally honest downsides of putting a rooftop tent on your vehicle. Before we get any further, if you like Jeeps, if you like overlanding content, camping, or if you like my motorcycle content or anything else I put out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, hit the bell. Please give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below about what you think about rooftop tents. All these things help me keep creating more videos. So with that out of the way, let's just jump right in and start talking about what are the pros, what are the upsides of a rooftop tent? So the first thing I wanna talk about, and maybe the largest factor, especially for me, is just the feeling, the psychological sense of safety and security by being elevated so far up the ground. You have the feeling that animals, whether it's bears or mountain lions or cougars or whatever you're dealing with, or also things that crawl on the ground like scorpions and spiders and ants, you're just up and you just feel like you're in this tree house and, and you just feel more secure. Whether it's actually more safe is another story because I don't know that it actually is, but psychologically you feel better and you sleep better just having that sense of being up high sort of out of the, off the ground, you know? The second big pro to the rooftop tent is the feeling that you're in a tree house. And I mentioned that just a second ago. So being up in the air, you have this nice view looking out the windows of the tent. You get more of a breeze up there. Uh, you're up off the ground, so you're not dealing with uneven ground or wet ground. And you just have this sense, like it almost harkens back to like, if you were a kid, if you got to play like in tree houses or things like that, like I did, I was lucky. It just brings back that sense. And th there's something really great about it that you don't get from a ground tent. So the third pro is these tents are built of sturdier, heavier materials. So they use canvas type materials uh, for the body of the tent, uh, but also the frame of the tent on something like this is much more stout, much larger frame tubing than any typical ground tent that you might find. So not only is the canvas much heavier and more able to withstand wind and water and the elements, but the tubing itself is really strong. So if you camp in a strong wind, it's still a canvas tent. It's still going to shake around and be loud and you know, probably prevent you from sleeping unless you wear earplugs, but it does hold up better to the elements. Also, I think that the construction, because it's so sturdy, is gonna hold up better over the long term than a traditional ground tent will. Although, now that I say that, I have had the same REI ground tent for like 15 years and it's still going strong, so I don't know. The next big advantage to a rooftop tent is that you can leave your bedding inside the tent. So this is nice because you can leave your sleeping bag, your pillows, uh, a sheet, uh, stuff like that in there. And of course you've got the mattress pad already in there as well because they come with that, although they're not the most comfortable and we'll get to that. But being able to leave it all in there means when you pop the tent open, when you set it up, all that stuff's in there ready to go. So it saves room in your car or your truck because you're not carrying a sleeping bag, a sleeping pad, um, pillows, all that kind of stuff. It's up inside, folded up in the tent. With a tent like this, you have to be careful how much stuff you put in there because it won't fold up properly. And some rooftop tents, the hard shell ones, depending on how they're designed, you may not be able to leave anything in there at all because they compress down really low. The next advantage is that, like I mentioned before, you're not on the ground. Because you're up off the ground, you don't have rocks, you don't have grass, you don't have ants. Uh, you know, dirt and sand, mud, if, it's, if you live in a wet area. So you're up in the air, so it's a huge advantage. You have a flat floor because the, the frame of the tent or the base of the tent is completely flat. That can be a really big advantage if you're camping in off-road areas or even a lot of campgrounds where the tent pads really aren't that great. So that can be a big advantage. But the fact that it's on your vehicle and you can't position it somewhere else is also a disadvantage, which we'll talk about in a minute. The last big advantage I'll mention about a rooftop tent is that you save more room in your vehicle by putting the tent up on the top. So you don't have, uh, some of the larger ground tents actually take up quite a bit of room, you've probably noticed. Uh, so you'd have that, you'd have your sleeping pads, your blow up mattresses, the pumps that go with that. 
uh, sleeping bags, and of course pillows and bedding. So all that in theory is up in your rooftop tent. So that saves quite a bit of room uh, in your vehicle. So if you have a smaller vehicle, maybe one of the Subarus or a sedan or something smaller, then that is a big advantage, uh, being able to keep it all up in the tent itself. All right, so let's talk about all of the disadvantages of a rooftop tent. And there actually are quite a lot of downsides to these things, so you really need to pay attention to this part if you're thinking of making the big investment in one of these. So the first downside, and it's a big one, is the price. So it goes without saying, if you've looked at these, they're really expensive. You know, the materials, the construction are heavy duty, I, I don't know, but I feel like there's probably a lot of profit in these things too for the companies that make them. But in any case, you know, low end ones, kind of like the Smitty Bill, although it's a good quality one, start around, I think this one was around $1,200. I've seen rooftop tents, you get in some of the hard shell tents, the ones that have like power opening and different things, $3,000, $4,000. To me, that seems like a heck of a lot of money for some metal frame and some canvas material. Uh, but that's just me to each his own. Uh, but yeah, it's a major investment and you really have to weigh that against, you know, how much other cool camping gear could you buy. Second downside is the initial mounting of the tent to your vehicle it's gonna take two or three people because whether you're putting it up on a rack over your truck bed like I have, or putting it up on the roof of your SUV or crossover or wagon, uh, they're very heavy. They, they start around 120 pounds and go up from there. So you can imagine how heavy and bulky these things are to try to get up on your vehicle. So not only the initial mounting of it and bolting it up, but if you wanna take it on and off for reasons I'm about to discuss on some of the other cons and how it affects your vehicle, if you wanna take it off and on a lot, then you really have a problem because it takes, you have to get like your whole family out of the house to help you maneuver this darn thing off and on. Some people have even rigged up like hoists in their garage to get them off and on. So that's a huge downside for me personally. Third downside for me is that a lot of people think that rooftop tents are easier and faster to set up than ground tents. And I actually really disagree with that. Based on my experience setting this thing up, uh, it takes me a good 15, 20 minutes, if not more, uh, from the start of you know getting the cover off to getting everything set up and all of the poles set up and getting the inside set up. Um, because the tent is high up in the air, and depending on your vehicle, it could be higher or lower, but because it's high up, it's actually hard to reach a lot of the rain flies and the attachment for the poles and getting the windows out and doing some of that, that can actually take a lot longer than you think because you have to crawl up or climb up on your vehicle. You may need a little step ladder. Um, so it's actually a little bit more involved than you might think. Now, there are hard shell tents that pop up. Uh, they may not have as much room as a fold out tent like this, but there are ones that if that convenience is a priority for you that are gonna be a lot faster to set up. The next big downside, and this is a major one you really need to think about for your situation, is that once you get this thing set up, once you get to where you wanna camp and set it up, you can't drive away. So this is the same problem that people with motorhomes have. Um, and that's why a lot of people like me prefer like a travel trailer because with a travel trailer or with you know a ground tent in the same way, you can set it up at camp and then you still have your vehicle to go, go for a hike or go run to town for groceries or go get firewood or whatever it might be but you need to be committed. Once you fold this thing up and get the ladder down and get all this crap set up, you're not moving till the next morning. So that could be a huge issue for some people depending on how you travel and how you camp. The other thing that goes along with that is that depending on where you camp, I've been in a lot of campgrounds where like where you park your car is a long ways from where they have the camp site for you because they're assuming you have a ground tent. So you can't drive your vehicle off the road and down to their little tent area. So in some situations, you may be setting up on the road of the campground uh, with traffic going by you, and it's kind of silly, whereas if you had a ground tent, you could set it up down below like in a tent area. So I think you know what I'm talking about there. If you don't use campgrounds, if you camp just remotely in, in the forest and stuff like that, then that's not a consideration for you. The next downside has to do with the ladder and simply the fact that you are up in the air. So as much as being up in the air is an upside, which I mentioned a minute ago, it's also a downside because think about it. Think about getting small kids, infants, toddlers up and down this thing safely without falling and having some sort of injury. Uh, dogs, cats, whatever you bring camping with you, I don't know. 
getting it up and down can be quite an issue. The other thing about the ladder is that if you have to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, because like I always do because I have a weird bladder, I guess, uh, or I drink too much water, but you know, you're groggy at 3 a.m., it's dark, it's cold, you have to climb down this ladder to go to the bathroom. Now, if you're really uh, a very enterprising person and creative, you may be able to uh, <laughs> go to the bathroom off the tent, uh, but not that I'm suggesting that, not that I'm admitting to having done that, but uh, there may be a workaround for that, but be careful with that one. Couple downsides relating to the size of the tent. So uh, the rooftop tents come in different sizes, but uh, whereas you can get a ground tent that's like a big family tent with like different rooms and different, uh, you can set up multiple beds. In a rooftop tent, you're gonna have one bed, right? And they make larger ones and smaller ones. But if you're trying to put your whole family in it, that, that may not really work unless you have a small family or small kids. The other thing about the size of it is that you're not gonna be able to stand up and change clothes in a rooftop tent. They're just simply not tall enough. I have a ground tent that's like one of those instant tents. And it's very handy because it's uh, six foot tall in the center, so I can stand up, change clothes, do whatever I want to do, whereas I can't do that in the rooftop tent. Another big downside to these tents, and this I guess also goes for a ground tent, but unless you are camping in an extremely dry, arid environment, uh, if you have moisture or dew on the tent and you need to pack up in the morning, if you fold up a tent that's damp, what's going to happen? Well you're going to eventually damage the tent because you're gonna get mold and mildew building up inside because it can't breathe once you close it and put that cover on. So what it probably means is that when you get home from your trip, you're gonna to have to open this thing up yet again and air it out to make sure that uh, you're not destroying your you know, $1,500 tent with mold and mildew. With a ground tent, the same thing can be true. Uh, although a ground tent's a bit easier to air out because you can take it out of the bag and just kind of lay it out on the, on the driveway. But these things, you know, you're not going to be able to do it in your garage because it's too tall. So you're going to have to do it in your driveway. Uh, and, and then again, you know, you're, you need a dry, sunny day to be able to do that. So that can be a real problem for some people. And I know people have ruined their tents by packing them up wet and then not dealing with it. All right, so now we get into what I think are some of the big, big issues with a rooftop tent. So it's how it affects your vehicle. So this is no small matter. Um, let me break this down for you. So you are putting 100 to 200 pounds, sometimes more, big boxy object up on top of your vehicle. The effects on handling, on safety, on gas mileage, on the effects of wind uh, cannot be understated. It's really a serious change in how your vehicle is going to perform. So the best case would be not to leave the tent on your vehicle all the time. Even if you have a truck like this Gladiator, maybe you have a Tacoma or even a full-size truck, whether you're putting it on a half rack like I have or a full height rack, don't think that, oh, it's not going to affect my gas mileage, it's not going to affect my handling. Uh, things like that. It, it simply does. Uh, the vehicle designers did not ever intend for a, a large boxy heavy object to be placed so high above the center of gravity of the vehicle. Think of where the center of gravity is on a vehicle. It's the engine, it's the passengers, it's down here with the suspension. Uh, you're putting weight way high up here and when you go around corners, it's bad. When you have wind, it's bad. It's bad for your gas mileage. It's heavy. Uh, if you're putting this on a lighter weight, smaller vehicle, like maybe one of the Subarus or a sedan, uh, the effects can be pretty dramatic. I mean, uh, cars like that are designed for good aerodynamics and you're gonna take a huge hit in fuel mileage because it's not aerodynamic at all, it's a square shape. Now, there are slimmer ones, like I mentioned, uh, hard shell tents that may be more aerodynamic, and that's fine, that helps, but still, it's going to be a big issue for you. So it makes no sense at all if you use one of these three or four times a year to be driving around with it every single day at high speeds and dragging down your vehicle. It just makes absolute no sense. So for me, this is a big downside. And actually, after I shoot these few videos today with this tent, I'm pulling this off for the summer because I don't plan. it's so hot this summer, I don't really plan to use it for a while. Um, and I want to just get that weight off my truck for a few months and just enjoy my Gladiator without all the crap on the back. So I'll put it on in the winter um, and go camping again, but I'm going to pull it off because it, it really bugs me uh, at this point. 
So let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. Do you like rooftop tents? Do you own one? And if you do, do you like it? Do you not like it? If you're thinking of getting one, uh, what do you think about the pros and cons I've talked about? Do you think it's worth it for your situation and why or why not? I think it's a good discussion to have because a lot of times what I find is that people behave a little bit too much like copycat. And I'm guilty of this too, where we see uh, people setting up their rigs in a certain way and we're like, oh, well, that must be good if everyone's doing that. But uh, you got to keep in mind the downsides because they're really, really serious. So final thoughts about rooftop tents. I think that they're overrated. I think that it's kind of an Instagram thing and I think that they're a bit much of a fad. But on the other hand, I think they have a genuine application for certain types of people who are serious overland travelers, who are not camping in campgrounds, who need the ability to camp in really rough terrain and bad weather, um, and who can enjoy the advantages of it. Uh, and maybe you have a more dedicated vehicle for overlanding or off-roading or camping. Um, but putting this on your daily driver to use it twice a year it is really a mistake and a really silly thing to do because of the way that it's gonna affect your vehicle and your fuel mileage and your handling um, and all the cons I mentioned. Not to mention, I didn't even mention the fact that you may not be able to go in and out of your garage with your vehicle, uh, depending on your individual setup. So rooftop tents absolutely have their place, but I don't think they're for everybody. I don't think they're a universal solution. I think you need to seriously think about the ups and downs I talked about. Think about how it applies to your personal situation and deciding whether it's worth the investment in one of these things. I sincerely hope this was a useful video, an informative video. If it was, again, please subscribe and hit the bell. Please hit the thumbs up. Please leave a comment. Uh, also, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I have some exclusive benefits for Patreon supporters, so consider doing that. I really appreciate it. This is my full-time gig now doing YouTube videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Drive safe, camp safe. See you out on the trail. See you on the next video.